Not minus four, just minus four. Throw away your eyes. part and side it if you are over 18 okay if you under 18 then you your parents have to sign
If we finish uh, two point four early, then uh, on Monday uh, I have time, then I give you guys um, more practice to do, so we kind of have a review session, something like that. Okay, if we have time. Okay, I don't promise that. Okay, but, but hopefully we we do because we we kind of ahead right now. Uh, we already finished function, relation, domain, range. Uh, we're going to talk about x and y intercept today. Uh, talk about uh, linear function, a standard form, and uh, average uh, rate of change. Okay. So again, test coming up. So be prepared, guys. Okay. Do the do the sample test. You have to. Because, uh, no other choice. That's the the only way um, you can do um, well on the first test. I don't I don't want you guys to fail the first one. Is this what it's going to look like? It's kind of, yeah. I can tell you that, yes. It's kind of like 99, 95% similar. Uh, I just changed the number. Just any number, I think. Okay? So, a couple of students, we already had intermediate algebra. We might, you know, I keep the same strategy. Uh, problem, uh, the number will be changed. Like, I mean, format the question. I'm going to do the same, the same kind of question. Okay? So, I'm not going to give you something like too hard. Okay. No assignment, you see that it's hard. I'm sure. The assignment harder than the homework. Uh, the test is harder than the homework, but it's still much easier than uh, the assignment. Okay? You see, the, the homework is very standard. Very super easy, <laughs> I have to say that. Uh, you can finish uh, that in 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes for the homework. Okay? And uh, I really, again, one more time, I uh, recommend you guys get together, try to finish the, uh, um, the sample test, uh, work together, okay? Uh, texting, calling, getting group, help each other, um, go to the math center, you have to. And as I, I guarantee, that as long as you study the sample test, then you should be okay. okay? Any other question? Good, very good. All right. <coughs> uh, I sent you guys the lecture video, or the link of the lecture video, right? So if you uh, missed the class, or if you don't understand anything, just uh, go back and uh, watch the, the lecture. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of helpful also. Uh, the solution of the test or the solution of um, assignment uh, is in uh, that channel too. If I, if we have time today, I will show you uh, the channel. Okay. All right. Anything? Anything? Any concern? China at this moment, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they um, pretty bad news over there. I mean, uh, official news, uh, it doesn't cover the whole story, okay? Because my country is very close, it's right under. So we, uh, there's a lot of uh, video uh, coming out from people living in, uh, in China. They say that it's, uh, it's like chaotic over there. You know, people try to get food, and you know they are uh, fighting each other. It's probably, it look like zombie apocalypse. Well, of course it's that, but uh, yeah, uh, the city is like a zombie city, like a part of the city. Uh, the more people must die. To be honest, okay? it's not like uh, 180 people. No, there are probably a hundred thousand infected already. To say that, so this kind of very. If you watch the news, if you um, update with the news, uh, in California, it's very hard to find the mask right. at this moment because I have a lot of relatives living in California. Yeah. There's a whole community, uh, uh, Vietnamese com big, uh, community in California, around uh, San Jose, um, um, Westminster, uh, Orange County, around that Los, and it's very hard to find. Uh, the um, uh, sanitizer or the mask. So be prepared. Okay? But it may, as long as I heard the news that somebody who is infected in Florida, I'll stop repairing. I have to say that. So what? you should do. 
I don't know, not yet, but oh as long God. as oh as long as I heard the news, <laughs> then I'll prepare. Okay? Who knows? We always have. To. I'm a guy of preparing. Okay? I prepare everything. Okay? All right, let's do some math today. Okay, so last time we talked about function, we know what domain is, we know what range is, okay? Uh, there's one concept actually I forgot to cover, actually, we, uh, we, I didn't have enough time to cover. So today we are talking about that concept, and uh, based on that concept, um, uh, we can construct um, uh, the slope of linear function and the linear equation. The concept I'm, uh, I'm trying to talking about today is uh, it's called the uh, average rate of change and uh, you will see this concept in um, business calculus uh, in calculus okay the slope formula you learn in um, high school or you learn in intermediate algebra it was this it was derived from uh, average rate of change concept okay so let's get started so uh, continuing uh, lecture last time okay and we want to talk about average rate of change. Okay. First of all, we need to know what's average rate of change. Well, actually, when you read that, you know right away that it's a, it's a rate of change. It's a changing in the average, right? Okay. So average rate of change describes an average rate. And because this is the, one of the, the, the property of function, I mean, the concept of function, and function is a relation between two quantities, okay? So average rate is described as average rate at which one quantity, one quantity is changing With respect to with respect to uh, another quantity. Okay. Sorry, what is the first word? Uh, right here. Uh, describe. Okay. So there's only two quantity uh, we're talking about uh, uh, for this one for average rate of change. And I want you to um, take a look at this graph of the function. Okay. This graph represents, uh, represents function. Okay. And I know that uh, this function is defined on uh, interval x1 and x2. So it's two point. This x1 and x2. So this is the graph of function f x. Okay. So x1 is the x component of the first point. Then we know that the y component will be f x1. Right? It's like we evaluate a function at certain value. You plug them in. We plug the value x into the function. So we have f x1 and if x2 is the x component of our second point, then fx2 is the y component or the output of the function of at x at, uh, at uh, x, uh, x of 2. Okay? And we already learned last time that the notation of function is y equal to uh, fx, then fx2 is equal to y2 and f of x1 equal to uh, y1. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to connect uh, the point, these two points here uh, using the straight line. Oh, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. So this straight line in, uh, over here I have, in mathematics, 
we call that secant line. Secant line. And the average rate of change is actually the slope of that secant line. So I say average rate of change. is the slope of a secant line. It's called a secant line between two points, right? Okay. What kind of line did you just say? Secant. 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 Okay. Yeah, secant line. Secant. In other words, the average rate of change is the ratio uh, between the difference of y over the difference of x is equal to, in, a, in other words, is equal to the difference of y. So it's in the change of y, you can say that, change of y over the change of x. Okay. And the change of y, we are notated as uh, Delta y. Delta y. This is the Greek letter. Okay? Delta. It's like delta fox, something like that. Okay. And uh, this is the uh, delta x. So in mathematics, every time we talk about delta, we talk about the difference between two values. Okay? And because this is the difference between uh, y and x, I can write this as the y1, uh, y2 minus y1, because uh, this is y2. y2 is from here to here. And y1 is from here to here. Okay. Then y2 minus y1, or the delta y, is right here. So this is delta y. So delta y will be uh, equal to y2 minus y1. So now you see that it looks like it's a slow formula now. Okay, and we're going to use this concept to uh, construct the slope formula over. Okay, x one is the distance uh, between the origin and uh, the value x one here. Okay, and x two is the distance between the origin and the value x two here. <coughs> then <coughs> delta x will be right here. Okay, then to actually the difference between x2 and x1. So I can write this as x2 minus x1. You have to be careful when writing this. If you write y1 first, well, for example, if I write y1 minus y2, then at the bottom, in the bottom, you have to write x1 minus x2. Okay? Um, otherwise, it doesn't matter. You can uh, go which uh, you can start with y one and you can start with y two. But at the bottom, it must be corresponding to um, the subscript. Okay. And y two is what? Y two is f x two. So I can replace y two here with f of x two. Okay. And y one is f of X one. Okay. At the bottom, I keep it x two minus x one. Okay. So what I have here is the formula of average rate of change, and this formula it measure how slanted the secant line is. Because if I move the point here, if I move to this value, to this point, then the secret line will be like that, right? It becomes stiffer, right? So however, if I move the point is further a little bit, and the secret line becomes like this. Any questions so far? So it measures that value, the whole thing, the whole value here, the 
if I look at box skin, it measures how slanted this slide is. And you see that it's changing. It changes. It depends on how you pick two points. Okay? Later on, uh, we talk about the average rate of change that is always constant. Actually, that average is that average rate of change we call it the slope of the line. Okay? Now let's take a look at the example. I believe that in the sample test, uh, I have a problem that looks like this. Okay, I want you to find the average rate of change given a function. So the function here is f of x equal to x squared minus 1. And I want you to determine the average rate of change, I call it ABC, okay? okay from From x1 equal negative 2 to x2 equal um, 0. Sometimes the question could be like this. Sometimes it's, uh, I can ask you, determine the average rate of change uh, on interval negative 2, 0. On interval. Negative two. So you know that you have to pick negative two as x one and zero as uh, x two. Okay. So you just pick the end point of that interval. Okay. All right. Let's see how we're gonna do this. It should be very easy. Okay. <coughs> so we're gonna use this formula here. So the average rate of change okay, equal to, let me rewrite uh, the formula, f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. Now our job is to find x2, minus, x2 and x1 and subtract, and we have to subtract from each other. Do you think we have x2 and x1 here? Yeah. Yeah, we already have it. Okay. So we go with that. So we have to find f of x2. We have to find f of x2. F of and it means f of 0. Exactly. Because x2 is 0, so it means f of 0. And the way you find f of 0. It's the evaluation we already learned. Okay? I mean, we plug 0 into the function. f of 0 is 0 squared minus 1. Okay, 0 squared minus 1. Uh, I'll give you negative 1. Right. And the same thing, likewise, f of x1 will be f of uh, negative 2. And you plug negative 2 into the function. And be careful. Because right now it's a negative value. When you plug into the function and it's square, you have to put parentheses. Because there's a big, big difference between this and this. This and this is not the same. Okay? A lot of students that uh, commit that kind of mistake. Okay. Minus 1. So I'll give you a uh, three. <coughs> All right. So I have f x two, f x one, I have x two minus x one already. I can just go ahead and plug them into the formula, and I can find a b c. Huh? All right. f x two negative one. f x one minus three over minus two. Okay, uh, over 0 minus minus 2 become positive 2. So my answer will be negative 2. And what does it mean by negative value? It means that the average 
rate of change is decreasing for every change in x okay for every unit change in x that's what it means okay and if uh, every rate of change is positive it means that uh, it's increasing for every unit change in x okay that's what it means okay. any questions so far And you see the average rate of change uh, is changing depends on how we pick the value. Okay, for example, the thing over here is uh, is stiffer. The line is uh, the slope of the second line. Or the second line becomes stiffer. However, there's a function. The average rate of change is always a constant. It never changes. Okay, that function is called a linear function. So today we talk about linear function. First of all, we need to know what I mean by linear function. What is linear function, in your opinion? What is linear function? Why we call it linear function? What do you think? In your own word, can you give me your own definition? What linear function is? It's a line that has at least two points that are connected to it. Okay, okay. So you mean the linear function represents a line? Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. First of all, linear function must be a function. I don't know why we don't call it a function anymore, right? So it must be a function. And because this function is satisfied. Uh, the condition, the statement we had last time, you know, uh, for each uh, input we uh, assign a unique output. So the linear function satisfies that statement. It must be a function which graph represents, okay. oh, which graph is a line. Okay. In a straight line. And the form of linear function is f of x denoted as the function equal to a x plus b. Okay. With a and b is any kind of value. It could be it could be fraction, it could be decimal, it could be radical. Okay. B, at this moment, we call that uh, uh, initial value. Okay. And this initial value is always fixed. Uh, sometimes we call it a fixed value. That's B, right? That's B, yeah. And put the arrow here. <laughs> okay. And the A, uh, it's the change. Okay. It's the average rate of change. So A, B, C. A, A is actually the A, B, C. And a constant A, B, C. Not just regular A, B, C. A regular A, B, C could be uh, changing because it depends on how you pick the line. Okay. How you pick the points. But for a linear function, it's constant. So I want you to uh, memorize this problem. Okay. For example, uh, I have f of x equal to negative 2x plus 5. For example. This is a linear function for sure, yes? Because a is negative 2, b is 5. Okay, I can have something with a uh, fraction, f of x equal to uh, 1 over 3x minus 4 over 6, for example. 
And I also say this is uh, in linear function 4. Because A in this case right now A is 1 third. B is negative 4 over 6, so actually 2 over 3. Okay. And every time I talk, uh, when, you, uh, when you define A and B, make sure that you included the sign in front of that. Okay? Because some students, they just, when they ask them, what is B, then you got to just say 4 over 6. It will be wrong. Okay? You, mu you must include the sign. Uh, so be negative or positive. Or I can have something with radical. Like I can have like radical 2 of x minus uh, 1 over radical 5. And I said this is still linear function because it's still in the form. Okay, your a is square root of 2, your b is uh, 1 over uh, square root of 5. Okay. okay. So as long as we know uh, the average, the constant average rate of change, later we call that the slope. Um, we want to uh, construct linear function algebraically, okay? And in order to construct the linear function algebraically, we need to know uh, uh, two formations of linear function. So on the second part, I want to talk about the formation of linear function. And the first formation, I want to talk about is the, the slope intercept form. Well, it sounds very familiar, right? Of course, you've done that already. Yeah. Slope intercept. And how we get the slope intercept form? I'm going to replace fx with y using the definition of function. So right now, instead of have fx equal to ax plus b, I replace fx with y shall become y equal. A, I replace that with m, represent uh, the slope. Okay. The, uh, actually, the letter m is come from the word modulus. Modulus plus b. So B right now, we have another name, we call it y-intercept value. Okay. So when uh, anyone asks you what the B, what B is, you have to say uh, B is y-intercept value. Okay. Don't just say B is y-intercept. Because there's a big difference between uh, y-intercept value and y-intercept point. Okay? Later, later we're going to talk about y-intercept point. This is just, b is the y-intercept value. I mean, uh, b is a number. That's what I mean. Okay? And m is the slope. And because m is the slope, m is, is a number also. It's a constant number. So, m is the number, b is the number. So, in this equation, we have only uh, two variables, x and y. We have two variables, x and y. Okay? And now, if you look at this equation, we need to know what value in this equation determine if the line is slanted upward or downward. Okay? Or it's, uh, it becomes a horizontal line, or sometimes it becomes a vertical line. Okay. How do I know that? Anyone remember? What letters over here, what variable over here can uh, determine uh, that? Hmm. Determine what again? Determine if it's the, uh, the line slanted upward or slanted downward. The B, I think. The M. The M. Because if M is positive, if M is positive, I know that the, the line goes kind of upward. So it's slanted upward. Okay? So it kind of go like this. Okay. If M is negative, and it's slanted downward. Okay, and 
this go like that. So sometimes uh, uh, I put a question like this. Uh, I put a question of linear function, and, and I ask uh, a student to graph linear function, okay? And by observation, by the first observation, I know that uh, the m is positive. But some way, somehow, a student graph the other way around. They graph it this way. And they don't recognize if it's wrong. So the m value here help you recognize right away if your graph is correct or not. Okay? If m is positive and you graph it like this, hmm, something wrong, right? Or if m is negative and you graph it like upward like that, then of course there's something wrong. Okay? How about if m equals zero? Yeah, so become a horizontal line. Yeah. So we can look at that. If m is zero, it's everything gone here, right? It's nothing here because zero times x is gone. So my equation becomes what? Y equal b. Okay? And this is a horizontal line. Okay? And this is like this. How about if we cannot define M? So we have undefined M. So if... That's vertical. It's what up? Vertical. Vertical line. Uh, then the equation at that time will be X equal to uh, a number. Okay? So we have vertical line. Now what if, what if we, are, we, we already define M, and M is a very beautiful number, okay? and my B is 0. So if my B is 0, so if B is 0, if B equals 0, my equation becomes Y equal to AX, right? Y equal to AX. Okay. So if you see any linear function or linear equation in this form, okay, y equal two x, y equal negative five x, something like that, you know that their graph. So the graph must go through. Let's go through origin. Okay. So if you learn mathematics carefully, and you learn word by word, okay, you see the function like this, in this form. I know right away that function must go through the origin. Okay? If I, if I see the function, for example, uh, y equal to 2x plus 5, I know right away that, uh, that, that the line is, must be slanted out, uh, upward. If you go to slope, it's positive. Okay? Alright, so after we know uh, uh, what the, the slope is, okay, uh, we're going to use uh, this concept as a rate of change concept and to see that we can construct the formula to find the slope or not. Okay? So, next part. So actually, it's still part of the slope itself. I want to uh, talk about the slope formula. Okay. And I have the graph of the line that looks like this. So on that line, uh, I will pick two points. The same way as uh, I did with the, the, the graph over here. I'm going to pick two points. Okay. And the first point I call point A. It's point B here. And I have the x component is x1. 
You see that? And the y component, uh, oh, the x, uh, the x component over here is x2. And the y component of a is y1. And the y component here is y2. <coughs> Using uh, the average rate of change concept, I can write the slope formula okay, m equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this formula is very uh, familiar. And if you, read, if you uh, look carefully, the line I have here, it intersect the y-axis and the x-axis at two points. I call it point C and D. So point C is the intersection point of the line and the y-axis. That's why point C I call the y intercept point. Point C is the y intercept point. Okay. And we're going to use the y intercept value to write the coordinate of y intercept point. So, which coordinate is? 0, comma, B. So if they ask you to find the, 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 the y-intercept point, you're looking for the B value, and you write it in this form. You're going to plug over here, so the x component is always 0. Okay, x component is always 0. So over here, uh, it will be B. Okay, and let me call over here A, the value over there, A. So point D, I think I'm going to write over there. It's easier for me to, oh, where's the eraser? All right. Okay. So point D is the intersection point between the line and the x-axis. Intersection, uh, that's why we call that x-intercept point. x-intercept point. And the coordinate, you know, any uh, point on the x-axis, they have y component 0, yes. So the coordinate will be a0. So the, the definition of x in the set point, y in the set point, it help you uh, understand and help you um, uh, deal with the problem when they ask you to find x and y in the set point uh, of the function, okay? And not just a uh, linear function, for any kind of function. So for any kind of function, the coordinate of x in the set point, y in the set point will be in this point. Okay, not just linear function. Okay, let's let's do an example. Do an example. I want to find x and y in the set point. Okay. Of the following function. Okay. Uh, let's do an example with linear function first. Let me pick one of them. Uh, how, about, how about this one? Okay. Uh, y equal to uh, negative 2x plus 5. Okay. Let's do the, uh, the x-intercept first. 
Okay, let's do axe intercept first. Axe intercept point. Alright. So in order to find x intercept point of this uh, function, we're gonna replace x, uh, replace y with zero. You see that x intercept point must be in this form. So y component is zero. So I'm gonna replace y with zero. So become zero equal negative two x plus five. I subtract the five. So I have x equal five two. Subtract the 5 divided by negative 2, give you 5 over 2. Okay. And some students just stop right here. No, but it's not good. Not good yet. Because they want you to find a point, you have to write in all the pair. So my point would be 5 over 2, comma, 0. Similarly, we can do y intercept point. Okay, for y intercept point, we must be in this form. And if it is this form, the x zero. Okay, so I replace x with zero. So my equation becomes y equal negative two, zero plus five. Positive five. Positive five. Very good. Because negative two times zero is zero. So y equal five. And we don't stop over here, okay? So we have to write the coordinate here. So 0, 5. Well, when I ask you for x in the set point, what is the set point of the linear function? It seems to be very easy. You know? It seems to be very easy. And with x in the set point and y in the set point, we can graph the line. We can graph the line. So, uh, I can grab this line. Okay. So one of uh, the problem is several tests. I have that. So uh, the first one is 5 over 2, 0. So 5 over 2 is about 2.5, right? So I have 1 here, I have uh, 2 here, uh, I have 3 here. It's 2.5 2 over here, so 5 over 2 here. So this is my first one. And it's 0, 5. So we one, two, three, four, five. So my second point here. And I can connect them, then I can graph. So this is one of the methods of graphing a uh, linear equation. Okay? Uh, you learn another method which is using the slope. Remember we do a rise over run, something like that. Okay, you can do that one too. But I really love this one. I don't know why, just my preference, you know, I, I love this, okay? Rise over run, it work, it work. you can start, uh, you can do that too, you see that? Rise over run, you start at 5, right? You start at 5, and uh, this is uh, uh, going down 2, going to the right 1, and you see that, it's right over here. And you see that, it's going to go through that. Going down 2, going to the right 1, okay? You can do that too. Okay, but I mean, uh, graphing using x intercept point and y intercept point is always give you the accurate graph. That's what I want. That's why. Okay, sometimes uh, using the rise over run method, the student uh, don't know if, you, uh, if they uh, want to go up or go down. They forgot. You know, they don't want, they don't know if they should go to the left or to the right. You know, sometimes we have to go to the right. Yeah, this is we go to the right, but even the negative, we go to the left. Okay, so that is one of the method of graphing a linear function. Okay. Any other question? Good. It's kind of easy. Um, so, right now we know the concept of the slope. We know uh, B. Okay. Um, I, uh, I want to do another example of constructing a linear function algebraically uh, given a certain information. So on the next example, example two, I want to draw uh, linear function or linear equation, same thing. 
that goes through pawn that goes through pawn <coughs> uh, let me make up the pawn it's going to be like, like, like 2 comma 3 for example and has a slope of
same thing. That goes through point. Uh, let me uh, make that up. Uh, the first point is um, how about uh, name two four, and the second point is uh, three seven. We have to use the slope formula. And again, just pretend that I don't know how to do it. Our first step, write down the equation. Okay, so on the test, you get stuck and you uh, panic. Calm down. Okay, think about what Mr. Nguyen say. Okay, go ahead, write out the formula down. And think about it. Okay, our task is to find two values, A and B. Okay, so we have to find A and B, and A and B is they don't give you. However, they give you the points. And we have to use the <coughs> formula. Okay, because this formula uh, related to the, the, co uh, the coordinate of two points. So I can find the slope. <coughs> so M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus. And I don't know if you remember, but in A, I always go back to the past, right? Your teacher uh, show you uh, that oh, you should level like this, right? You know, I, I don't have high school in America, but I still remember. So this <coughs> x one next to is uh, Y1, Y2, something like that. Because a lot of students get mistaken, a lot of students confused. I don't even know which one, X1, which one. Oh, this is X2, X2 sorry. Uh, you see? Uh, they don't know which one x1, which one x2, which one y1, which one y2. So they pick this as y2, then they pick negative 2 as uh, uh, y1 sometimes. Okay, it happens. So it's good that you are not good at uh, uh, finding the slope using the formula. You go ahead and label. Okay, so after I label, I can just plug them in y2, 7, y1, 4, over. x2, 3, minus, minus, minus 2, yeah, minus, minus 2, because uh, there's a subtraction and there's a negative side. Oh, if I ask you like this, I don't know if you know. What's the difference between subtraction and negative side? Find each other becomes a plus sign. If I decide to become a plus sign, that's just how I remember. You know, sometimes when you plug into the calculator, you know, you hit, uh, for example, you um, uh, you have negative five, and on the calculator, the TI eighty four. I don't know if you guys have it. There are two negative, and you pick uh, if you click uh, the the one that's longer than the other. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Sometimes I actually, I don't know how to set it up like that. It should be the same. Because I like that one because you know, it's two negative close to each other. It give you a positive one. It's two, two subtraction side close to each other give you the positive, give you addition side. The reason they separate that thing because uh, is in the advanced uh, uh, mathematics uh, when they talk about integer and they have a positive integer and negative integer. When we really analyze the integer uh, set, then uh, that will be a big difference. Yeah. Other than that, this is the same thing. Okay. So over here, I have uh, 70 minus 4, 3 and a half over here, 5. Okay, so I know the slope is positive. So because the slope is positive, I know that the line slanted upward. 
Okay, some students got slow positive, but some way, somehow, when they grab it, because they mess up with the rice overrun method, it turned out to be slanted downward. Okay, it happens a lot. Happens a lot. So I got an M already. I can write the equation y equal to three over five x plus b. Now you just pick one of the points. Now I'm gonna pick a, a point. So what, what point should I pick? Whatever. Whatever point. You guys agree with her? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did three and seven. Three and seven? You can pick three and seven. I bet it's easier, right? Uh, yeah. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, but you agree with her that uh, it doesn't matter what point you should pick. Uh, uh, it should give you the same thing. All right, three and seven should be. Uh, easy because it's all positive, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna make three and seven. So I put seven here, three here, five here, x here. So I have seven equal to nine over five plus b. Then b equal to seven uh, minus nine over five. <coughs> seven minus nine over five, please. Twenty-six over five. Twenty-six over five. All right, then I got B. Then I got a whole equation y equal to uh, 3 over 5 x plus 26 over 5. And sometimes it's like this. Sometimes you could, uh, got the right answer already. But the answer is so fractional. And they think that they got them wrong. So they get panicked because the answer is so fractional. That's why, guy. It just fraction is just a number. So this is just the, the mindset. Every time you see fraction, you cut. Oh, I'm afraid of that because of fraction, you know. But I mean, that's all you can learn them. You know, everything is good. You know how to find this denominator. You know, you you careful with this. And that's okay. I mean, the answer could be fraction. As I already give you an example here, the answer could be fraction. The answer could be I grow up most of the time, it's not, you know, barely. So, uh, the case you have radical when they give you like the point is the radical. If the point is radical, yeah, then you can get the radical. Yes? What situation do you get multiple x intercepts? Multiple x intercept? Hmm. Mm -hmm. No. We have only one x intercept. Because uh, you draw the line. The lines cannot. Split into two or four or five different branches, you know, we don't have, we don't have like this, right? Uh, we draw a line like this, and you go over here and it start like... If that were to happen, it wouldn't be linear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> work has to be like positive and negative for the x-intercept. Like zero and two and then zero and negative two. What's that? Two and zero and negative two? Like, um... On the homeworks, when we were doing the x intercepts, I had us like do two. So, like for x, it would be two and zero, then the mm -hmm. other one would be negative two and zero. And what we'll I put those. They have points. something like that on the homework? Yeah. Two and zero, negative two and zero? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you pick that and it's correct? Or they say this is correct, that is correct one? That was the correct answer. When, when they asked you to find the x intercept? Oh, it could be like this. The function is not linear. Yeah, it's not a linear. The function is just uh, uh, any function. Like okay? So in this function right here, I give you this linear one. Okay? So yeah, it could be like this. The function is not a line. The function is probably like this. Like this. There you go. We have one intercept, one, two, three, four. Yeah, but the function is not a line. Okay, we're gonna learn. Uh, we're gonna talk about this kind of function uh, in the next few weeks. This function we call a, a polynomial function, and actually, linear function is the first degree polynomial function. But I mean, when we get to that, we're gonna uh, uh, you will understand. Okay, any question over here? All right, all right. Let's see what else uh, we should do. Good. Okay, so we already talked about the first form, the slope intercept form. Uh, another form I want uh, I want you to know also. Uh, 
This, this form we call the standard form of linear equation. In the textbook, uh, they call that uh, uh, linear, linear equation uh, in two variables. Okay, so two, a standard. So you see, if you go back to the slope intercept form, you know that, well, this is a number, A is a number, B is a number, then you have Y and X. I mean, you have two variables. Okay? It means that from the slope intercept form, we can convert to standard form. Or from the standard form, we can convert to slope intercept form. So in the example, I'm going to go through that. But let's talk about the standard form, the, the standard form of linear equation. So the standard form has is ax plus by equals c. Okay. With abc is number. Well, I mean, it mean it could be any kind of number. Fraction, radical, decimal, whole number. Okay. For example, I have standard form another place. It's 1 over 2x plus 4 over 5y equal negative 7. So I have a is what? a is 1 half. It's half. b is positive 4 over 5. c is negative 7. Okay. Sometimes we write like this. Uh, how about 4x minus 2y plus 7 equals 0? Well, they just kick the c into the right hand side, but it's still in standard form. Okay? Because we kick it back. We get it back to the right hand side, your c becomes negative 7. a is still 4. b is still negative 2. Okay? So sometimes we write like this, okay? Okay, and it could be radical too. It could be like this, square root of x plus square root of four, uh, 5y equal minus uh, a half. It could be like that too. It depends on the point, okay? If the point is not a whole number, if the point is a radical number, then of course it turns out to be like that, okay? So there's a... Uh, mathematics in, in math is very uh, transformative. Okay? Uh, you guys have to be flexible. Okay? You guys have to uh, fit yourself into a, a certain situation. Okay? To adapt. Adaptation is very important. Okay? You don't learn it by routine. You don't learn it like, okay, this is the formula. I just apply the formula and no. Uh, you have to understand. You have to adapt yourself into each situation. Okay. Okay. So I just say that this is the two variable uh, equation, and the slope intercept is also the two variable uh, x and y equation. It means that some way somehow these two form is related. And when these two form are related, I can convert from one to another form, or vice versa. Okay. Let's go through another. Thing. Uh, I want to convert uh, a standard form okay, to slope intercept form. Definition, a lot of things you have to put into your brain. Okay? 
Okay, so that's why I want you guys to uh, prepare uh, from this time on. Alright, so let me pick 4x uh, minus 2y plus 7 equals 0. And I want to convert this into a slope intercept form. Well, it's not the standard form yet because a 7 is on this side, so I'm going to kick 7 to the other side. And when I kick x, I subtract both side by 7, so I have c negative 7. Alright, now I want to bring it back to this form. The reason I want to bring it back to this form because as long as I bring this back to slope intercept form, I can define what the slope is, what m value is. If I keep it like this, hmm, it's hard to tell which one is the slope, right? Actually, we don't know where the slope is. No slope here. So I want to convert to that. Okay? What should we do? So take the 4x to the right hand side. Uh, take 4x to the other one. Because look at that. x is to the right hand side. Right now we have x on the left hand side. Take 4x. Negative 4x minus 7. Alright. According to uh, the slope of the set form, in front of the y is nothing. But right now, in front of my y, I have negative 2. So how am I going to get rid of it? Divide by negative 2. Okay. So I divide negative 2, I divide each of them okay. by negative 2. So I can show I have y equal to 2. Negative 2, oh, negative 4 divided by negative 2 gives you 2x. Negative 7 divided by negative 2 gives you positive 7. So right now, what is the slope? 2. two. two. And what is the y to step value? So, uh -huh. I didn't say y to step. Okay, I say one to set value. Okay. And I didn't say one to set point. I say one to set value because every time we talk about point, it must be in this form. Okay, it must be in that. Alright? So that is the way uh, you convert um, uh, standard form to slope intercept form. How about the other way around? I want to convert uh, to from uh, standard uh, from slope intercept form okay, to points. Oh, to standard. I'm sorry. Intercept form is uh, y equal to negative 4 over 5, x minus 1 over 2. And I want to bring this form to this. What should we do? So you have to put the common denominator. Okay, okay. According to Simmons, you said uh, we have to find this common denominator. Okay, any other uh, way? Should I move the negative 4x, negative 4 over 5x over to the other side? So it would be positive? Like, uh, what do you mean? Like, so move the x to the other side. Yeah. You move the x to the other side? Wouldn't we have to move everything to the other side? And we move everything to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> we move everything to the other side. Okay. We move everything to the other side. Okay. I have to say the statement is correct too. But in order to bring to that form, it's much easier if we just move 4 over 5 here, right? And you just add y equal to negative. It's in the standard form already, your a here. Your b is 1. And your c here. But I really like what Stephen do because when he finds least common denominator, we don't have to deal with fraction. So let's see. Uh, what do we do to get rid of the fraction using his idea, okay? So let me do another method. So we still have Alright, so according to him, we have the Lisbon denominator. Alright, what is Lisbon denominator in this case? 10. 10. So I multiply by 2, by 2, by 5, by 5, okay? So I have negative 8, 10x. 
minus 5 over 10. <coughs> then the same denominator already, I can combine it, negative ax minus 5 over 10. Then, Ten y equals ten y equals multiply both sides by ten. So I have ten y equal negative a x minus five. Now I'm going to kick a x to the left hand side. So I have a x plus ten y equal to negative five. So my standard form by finding this many denominator is much better. It's more beautiful than keep it fraction like that. Okay, so if I want you to convert into a standard form, please put in use LCD. Okay, any other question? All right, if you guys don't have any questions, hopefully that next week we have a one day review. Hopefully, because it looks like we kind of uh, have time right now. So uh, I can uh, uh, spare one uh, whole session for review. Okay, all right, go ahead, turn in uh, the that release. Okay, and uh, those who have not got the assignment, uh, you can come see me.